Hello again, everybody, and welcome to Simi Pro. I am Dalton Barrett, and in the studio with me, I've got my good friend. Hi, I'm Josh Clements. I yes, I know what's going on. <laughs> yeah, you know what's happening. You knew I started. Yeah, I know what's well, I wasn't. I wasn't. I wasn't reading my notes in this amazing movie. <laughs> I, I can't wait to talk about this movie. I genuinely <laughs> cannot oh. wait. Uh, we watched. Mortal Kombat Annihilation. And, um, you know, last week we watched Mortal Kombat 1. And, uh, you know, it was just, it was hard to sit through. And I'm very excited to hear your views on Annihilation. Because, honestly, <laughs> I think I liked it better. <laughs> yeah, I liked it better. It, Yeah, I'll say that. I liked it better. I'm just going to leave that. <laughs> All right, well, let's hop into it. Yes, we watched Mortal Kombat Annihilation, and welcome to this episode of Simi Pro. I just want to say, like, first and foremost, before we say anything else at all, what a movie. <laughs> like, when Martin Scorsese was talking about how uh, the, the the Marvel <laughs> movies aren't cinema, this has to be what he had in mind. W would you agree? Oh, w without a doubt. There, there is nothing more. Just, I, I had my jaw on the floor this entire movie. And I don't know if it was for good reasons or because I was shocked at what I was watching. There are genuine moments where I laughed. There are genuine moments where my jaw literally dropped to the floor. No, never for the reason that the filmmakers intended. However, from the opening scene, this movie is so beautiful. And it sucks okay. because this is the one that's supposed to be... Bad. Well, this and is, it this is, is bad. Yeah, Don't, this, I... one, <laughs> this is the one that's been like ridiculed for years as the the bad Mortal Kombat. This killed the franchise <laughs> of two <laughs> movies, and this is better than the first one. Uh, like, well, uh, hold on, hold on. This is not a better movie than the first one. <laughs> this movie this is, is way better. more enjoyable, but it is it's definitely a better not a better movie. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. would if I if you held a gun to my head. And made me rewatch one of these two, which is the only reason I would ever rewatch one of these two movies. <laughs> I would pick this one in a heartbeat. Oh, absolutely! You fell asleep in the first one, didn't you? Yes, or I was did. That, I or was that it was that Kong? <laughs> no, that was Godzilla. I fell asleep during Godzilla '98. I fell asleep during the 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 first Mortal Kombat. I I may or may not have had a few little doses during this one, but nothing. I didn't sleep through the whole movie like I did '95. Uh, welcome, welcome to Semi Pro, where you rate <laughs> movies on how fast they may don't fall asleep. Yeah, well, no, Mortal Kombat '95. It was the first half hour and then i was out until the final battle i don't know if we really talked about that on the podcast but i was talking about that movie completely blind um oh yeah uh, well okay so speaking of this movie picks up seconds after the first one left off sort of like, immediately it, it, i mean it, it sort of it recaps the first one and it goes hey they they all fought the day and they everyone lived happily ever after and then and then a, a giant demon appears in the sky um, Except for now he's normal-sized. He was a giant demon yeah, in the no. last one, but now he's a normal-sized dude who looks just like no. Johnny Sins. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, thought, I was going to go I was gonna go with, he looked like the, the mutant son from Fury Road. Mm. The the bald, like, muscle-bound three-year-old. Uh, but yeah, so he appears, and like, they in 30 seconds, you just kind of have to get used to the fact that only two characters returned because every other person read this script and went, yeah, this is just a huge pile of garbage and I don't want my name associated yeah, with it. Yeah, Sonya Blade and... Um, Sonya uh, Blade, Jax, Johnny Cage, uh, Raiden, 
all of them were recast right because no one wanted to return to this this awful franchise <laughs> and, and then the the to to remedy that, I guess they immediately <laughs> immediately kill off Johnny Cage. I mean, within but, yeah. the first few minutes of the movie, he is on the ground dead. Uh, yeah, Shao Kahn appears. Johnny Cage tries to kick him. He grabs him and he's like, "Hey, Raiden, come over here, and I won't kill Johnny Cage." <laughs> and then like Raiden, who by the way, I will say that Raiden, I prefer this Raiden to the one in uh, the first one because like he doesn't. I do he has too. More of a, he has like more of a presence, you know. Like he feels like a like a demigod, like he's meant to be. He doesn't feel like some dude hissing in the corner trying to be Norman Osborn. <laughs> <It> was... um... <laughs> but he was also so goofy in, later in the oh, movie. Oh god! I, yeah, when when he turns into a German Euro trash rock <laughs> star, I laughed. It, it was beautiful. It was the best thing I've ever seen. Um, but yeah, so he, Raiden's like, okay, I'll, I'll surrender myself. And before Raiden even like moves he kills johnny cage like ha ha i got you now <laughs> did you because raiden's still on the other side of this giant like pillar or whatever you're standing on i don't think you got him i think you just killed someone <laughs> and then they disappear and they're like in six days the world will be mine and they just run off and it's never explained why it's six days it's never it's never explained why they run off they could have just killed them all there there there's I, there's two or three moments in this where and I can't find any sort of significance to why, but um, the six days thing comes when Shao Kahn enters and he says, God made the earth in six days, and now I will destroy it in six. And it's like, well, aren't you a demigod? Like, disproving Christianity within this universe? So why... <laughs> why <laughs> what does that matter and then there's another moment later where uh shao Kahn quotes scripture yet again and it's very fascinating because there seems to be no reason for it yeah I, yeah so th this movie is very strange <laughs> so like i say we're approaching this from two perspectives here dawn's never played any of the games and i i assume you just have like a vague oh, I, have a, I have a pretty good character. knowledge of the games i mean nothing major i know the characters that's basically it and that's with a mortal Kombat <laughs> game that seems to be all you really need to know well yeah they, every game they reboot the franchise basically um uh, but yeah i i have a bit more knowledge and so this movie, so do you, remember, do you remember when we were talking last week about Mortal Kombat? I'm like, I hate this movie because it is scene after scene of a character walking into a place, new characters appearing, they fight, one dies, and they move on with their lives. Yes, that, I love this movie because every scene is scene after scene of a character appearing, they walk, they fight, and one of them dies. <laughs> Exactly, but this movie's better somehow. It has like no, Josh, like the, the you've got to quit no, no, saying no. that. This movie is no, no, not no, better. No, no, no. I genuinely, I look. I know that I'm a film bro, but I genuinely think, um, like, like the fight scenes in this are actually better. They don't feel slow no, and slow. I will say they that actually, the combat in this like... movie is such a huge improvement over the first one, and I don't know why, but they they nailed it in this movie. They went for a little oh. more stylized take, but the actual fight scenes are better. Yeah, yeah. Do you know, um, fun fact, uh, Ray Park stunt doubled Raiden. This was his first movie. I did know that. I had heard that somewhere. Uh, that's um, one thing that, that baffled me throughout the whole thing. From that opening fight, I was like, this is better than the last movie. And it shouldn't be. Because uh, this movie is significantly worse in every other conceivable way. It somehow, that, it, it somehow looks older. Yes. Uh, the, the, the greens, they, they chroma keyed out the sky. <laughs> 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 if I could sum this movie up in one sentence, it would be, they chroma keyed out the sky. <laughs> I don't they, know why they chose to do that. But they did it for There's... the majority of the movie. So, so the the plot of the movie is basically that the the outworlds are merging with Earth Realm, and everything's going to come to hell. And so the skies are all like red and stormy, and things are going to go, everything's going to hell. It's all going wrong. Um, They're mostly and, purple, like, Josh. <laughs> the right. skies are mostly purple. But right, everything just kind of looks muddy. Um, 
But there's there's a mo- so at the beginning of the movie, Shao Kahn and his generals appear. One of those generals is uh, uh there's Shiva, there's Ermac, uh, uh Mortaro. I'm trying to think about some of the other ones. Who's the main one? Uh, Sindel, Queen Sindel. Um, and like they <laughs> they stand there, and this when, this green screen is so bad that you can you can see on her shoulders and in her hair like her body is being cut off actively. Because she's getting caught on the people behind her. It's amazing. <laughs> There's one shot where Raiden gets thrown into like this dust pile. Oh, and you yeah, can see yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the clumping, which is something that happens with chroma key if you do it I- improperly. Bad thing. Bad thing. Um, <laughs> you can see like where instead of it being individual dust particles that come out, which is not the way you would want to film that if you know you're going to. They had to have said after the fact, we're going to chroma key out the sky. Yeah. But, yeah. That- there's no other like answer. There's no way they shot it with that intention. But he hits the because normally you'd have him fly into the thing and you'd add the dust in post. Simple, easy. You get it done with. It's over. Um, but instead, you can see like the dust particles clumping, which is not what they would do naturally, of course. And on the screen screen, and that for me was the shot where I was like, okay, this was unnecessary. Like you, <laughs> you should not have. You should not have done this <laughs> to the sky. See, see, for me, it was when Queen she, uh, 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 Sindel is talking and her shoulder actively disappears because Ermac is behind her and they think that that's the same <laughs> body. Um, it, it is so bad. But yeah, so then, then they will disappear and Raiden, Raiden's an amazing motivational speaker in this one. He, he, they, they're like, you need to get more warriors so that we can fight all of their warriors. And uh, Liu Kang's like, didn't I just win like this Mortal Kombat thing? Can we not just go home and leave it? And he goes, you did great, Liu Kang. Now find more people. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's basically so, how it goes. Because because Liu Kang, he, he's talking. He's like, yeah, we just, we won. Like, what what's going on here? Like, and Raiden has zero answers. He is zero help in this other than just telling the team to go and find more team like that's that's it yeah so so uh katana and Liu kang who had kind of a thing in the first movie uh they they go off to find uh who is it night wolf night wolf but before we get to there can we i just briefly want to mention how much better shiva looks than goro in the first movie um, oh yeah, yeah. Still a little wonky because they decided to to composite her arms, basically just mirror them. Well, um, it, it's basically just it's basically a really buff woman who they just <laughs> they composite they took off her arms and then doubled it beneath them. Yeah. Um, and so they all move so the same, better. but it looks so much better than Goro did in the first one. And it's a really she interesting doesn't... way to do that effect too. I guess if you're filming on a on a on a on a green screen and you're chroma keying out everything, it would be somewhat easy, but it looks, it looks yeah. significantly better than Goro did in the first one. Um, right. Um, I mean, she doesn't look like a stick. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't look like she's going to topple over every second. She, she walks. Her, so her mouth moves in time with the words <laughs> that she's saying. Um, when she kind speaks, of... words come out, you know, it's, <laughs> it's pretty miraculous how far you technology know. has come in just two years. <laughs> It's amazing how how great a movie looks when it acts like a movie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're we're going to meet Nightwolf. Uh, right, they're, they're going to meet Nightwolf, and uh, uh, Sonya's going to meet Jax, who in this movie has robotic arms <laughs> for no reason. <laughs> and um, um, and and Sonya is very upset that Johnny Cage is dead, and that comes back up right. later. So I'm going to keep mentioning it because they keep mentioning it. She is very very upset that Johnny Cage is dead. Right, yeah. Um, but so so Katana and Liu Kang run off to go meet what Nightwolf and they're like they're traveling through these caverns to try and find stuff. And all of a sudden, uh, uh, Smoke appears, who's a character in the games, and he's he's a robot who tries to fight them and they they start they start losing and this is kind of the point where i realized hey these fight scenes look really good like yeah. like katana and uh Liu kang are punching and they actually look like their punches are connecting to things it's it, it's amazing it's in real it's time like, like the speed is is how it should yeah, be they, normally they're not moving at uh they're not moving at half a second because they don't want to actually hurt people that they're hitting um it's almost like this movie's a fight movie 
Right. Uh, well, that can't be stressed enough how much better the actual fights are in this movie than c- compared to the first one. Um, that's not the first movie's biggest issue, uh, but it's one of them. And, and this movie does fix that. As bad as this movie is, this movie fixes the combat issue from the first movie. Right, no, like in an instant. Um, Because Smoke and a bunch of goons fight them and they like, they fight back and they win, obviously. Uh, But then Sub Zero comes to the rescue uh, and he he freezes Smoke, who blows himself up. Um, In a a much better design than the last one, I will say too. uh, Not, well, I say much better. Not much better. In a better design than he had in the last one. Um, Sub Zero <laughs> appears, right? And they're like, "Hey, didn't I kill you by throwing a bucket of water at you?" <laughs> and uh, he goes, "Yeah, that was my brother. We're all good now." <laughs> uh, Is that a game which... thing? Is that uh, yeah. I felt like that so had in... to be a game thing because they wouldn't well, have thrown okay. that in there if it wasn't from the game. So, so in the game, the first in the first Mortal Kombat game, Sub Zero gets killed by uh, Scorpion, uh, and that is, that is by Han who would later go on to die and then be reincarnated as Noob Cybot, which is, you know, he's basically just a ghost demon of Sub-Zero. Got it. Uh, and then his brother does take up the mantle of, school, of, of Sub-Zero, uh, but he's a good guy this time. He's uh, uh, Kung Luang, I think, something like that. <laughs> I, I know I've just try. pronounced that as the <laughs> most racist way possible. <laughs> that was the whitest you could have ever done it. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but yeah, so he, he, that, that's the thing in the, 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 in the games. And then Scorpion appears in a worse design. And I th- also uh, thought it was better. The mask was a little bulky. I, I like the tunics better here than... The, the tunics look better, but the mask looks so... I, like, I don't know what they were doing with it. It looks like a gas mask. It's it's a respirator, is what it is. He's wearing a respirator. Because he got his skull but knocked he... off, so the mask is holding them together, you know. They don't explain how he <laughs> lived. They explain... No. They don't. They don't explain that at all. They explain that Sub Zero dies and his brother took up the mantle. They don't explain that at all. Um, Sub Zero is like, "Hey, you guys need to move." Scorpion just takes Katana and then both of them disappear, and it's never mentioned again that they ever exist. No, never. But that, that and it was that, almost that's like the biggest it, issue. It felt a lot more like, "Well, we have a Mortal Kombat movie. We need Scorpion and Sub Zero in it, or it's not but, a Mortal yeah. Kombat well, movie." Because they're. From an outsider perspective, they're the most iconic characters. The the two of them are, are the two that, like, everybody knows, regardless uh, as to whether you've played Mortal Kombat or not. You know Scorpion and you know Sub-Zero. Those are the two that, that without a doubt, you know. I, I mean, that's just, the, the, once again, from my perspective, because those are the two that I know the best. Because um, they're the most iconic looking ones. They're, you know, they got the, the rivalry yeah, they're, or whatever. They're... They're on the the cover of every box, right? Um, I, I mean, they're they're, they're the everyone. ones that when you see them, you know. So it's almost like you have to put them in this movie. Um, they could have right, done it yeah. better. Well, the the biggest the, the biggest issue with this movie is that they tried to squeeze in the uh, the plots of Mortal Kombat two and three, and in doing so, they're like, oh, we need all of these characters from Mortal Kombat two and three. So half the time you get characters who just appear, then die, or name drop someone, then die, or just don't even really appear and then die. Well, um, and that's sort of in vain with the first one. Uh, the, the first movie had that same thing going on where characters just kind of appear and 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 disappear. It's like a DC right, but, movie, like a DC <laughs> film. Like characters just kind of one, show up, and you're expected to to know them already. Well, the 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 reason it works, but it works better with this movie though is that there's there's so many. That you kind of get used to it. With the first one, it didn't do that, and those were like the main characters. <laughs> well, yeah, the I'm gonna break this down really quick, and I was gonna save this for the end. There is a reason that this movie is more fun to watch than the first one, and it's not that it's a better movie; it's that the first one isn't bad enough. Mortal Kombat 1995 <laughs> is not bad enough, and I told you this last week, and you didn't believe me. It's too good. It's 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 a bad movie and it's horribly boring. 
but it's not bad enough to be enjoyable. This movie is like classic B movie schlock with the bad special effects and, and, and good action to, to kind of boost that up. And the dialogue is so hokey and corny and, and it, you can laugh at almost every scene of this movie. Whereas the first one, it's not bad enough to make you laugh, but it's not good enough to make you enjoy it's it. Bad, it's bad enough to make you bored. Um, uh, but yeah, that like, so what we what we just what just happened there where uh, characters move to a place they fight people and then move on that's the movie. Uh, so after this you get you get Sonya and J- meeting Jax again and they have to fight Cyvax. Uh, Jax has these giant robotic arms which look so like they they're so bulky, <laughs> um, and they're just like she she's surprised at them and there's no reason they should be there. Other than, uh, uh, like... He has them in the video game? Like, I mean, Pretty that, much, yeah. That, yeah. Which, I didn't mind them all that much until the end. <laughs> where right, he yeah, takes where, them off. Where it's, revealed, where it's revealed that they're just kind of, like, on his arms. Cause, so, in, in the games, uh, I believe it is Shinnok or Shang-Chi who um, uh, uh, basically removes his arms. Like, they just get, uh, like, taken off him. He gets amputated. Uh, in the new movie, it's Sub Zero who does it, um, but then yeah, he gets the robotic arms to replace those, and in this one, he just has them because. And uh, <laughs> the brain is like, like maybe the real robotic arms were the friends we made along the way. <laughs> well, and it's it's they're they're so they're fine. I'm okay with him having them, but I oh, assumed no, they, they, they were. They were... I assumed they were they were robot arms. Like I assumed he he had his arms removed and replaced with robot arms. Right, but right. he you didn't like um, cybernetic, like like built in, like enhancements. The, the, yeah, no, but yeah, they're like, like armor. They're just, they're, they're just sleeves. <laughs> I mean, it's so weird because it's, and, yeah, and uh, Sonya Blade makes the the the. I thought it was a joke, but turns out it's Jax's arc for the movie. <laughs> and he's got <laughs> yeah, some self-esteem like, issues. What have you got on yourself now? Like, <sighs> like, oh, you got some self-esteem issues. You need to work on that so that you can see how strong you really are. The robotic like, arms see- are the friends we made the, along the way. And it's... Uh, he and then that's his arc for the movie. Like it was an offhand joke, but nope, that's actually his his character arc. It's fascinating. Yeah, and, and my I, my favorite part about Jackson in this movie is that uh, him and Sonya go on this trek to try and meet Raiden at the Elder God Temple, and the entire time she's like, "Hey, look, I fought with Liu Kang and Johnny Cage. We fought in this tournament. We we you guys, you don't understand. We beat Emperor Xiao, uh, Shang Tsung, and he's just like." I don't know who any of these people are. What are you saying? Jax is my favorite character in this movie because he he doesn't understand. He's just like, yeah, I'll help you out. Like, I'll, he's, I'll, he's like he's like the audience standing. Yes, absolutely. And he's like, this doesn't make any sense. I don't know what's happening. But you know what? You're my friend, Sonya Blade. You're my partner. So I am going to be there for you. And we're going to have a great time fighting Johnny Sins. It's it's great. I I, I, I loved Jax in this movie. I even loved the, the arm sleeves because they were so funny and made no sense. <laughs> it's so oh. stupid. This whole movie is so stupid. This whole movie is so dumb. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Jax, Jax and Sonya beat Cyrax and they move on with their lives. Uh, uh, every now and again we get cuts to like Shao Kahn and his people. And like they'll be like, hey, I've captured these guys. And he like, you have captured them? Kill them! And then he just kills his general. And that's like it. Uh, he's he's answering to his dad the whole movie. Um, uh, uh, then Liu Kang meets Nightwolf, who is in a horrible furry outfit. Um, <laughs> and he appears as a wolf, and he's like, you should be an animalistic man. <laughs> okay, he's... is that a thing from the games too? Because that's something I was confused on. So, so in the games, uh, Nightwolf is uh, a Native American who, you know, he's in touch with the spirit world and as such can, can conjure, like, uh, bears and wolves and eagles and stuff like that. Um, but they're, they're very specifically 
spirit animals. They're not like like he doesn't himself become one. Uh, though he can kind of like he can he can allow the spirit to possess him, so he gets the strength of a bear or the speed of a wolf or something. Um, but he never he never turns into a werewolf. Like right. this movie. Okay, got it. <laughs> I will say um, respect to this movie for getting an actual Native American to play him. I, I was gonna because I was it, gonna it, ask is he like genuinely Native American? Yeah, his name is his he he's a he's a hip hop artist. Um, as well as, you know, actor, uh, businessman, that kind of thing. His name is Lightfoot and he, he's a, he's an actual native American. And in the nineties, that wasn't all that common. And so I will say, um, I mean, it's not all that common even today, really. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, that's true. Um, but it, it, it you got Hawk from, from Twin Peaks, but they did, they did get an actual native American to, to, to play him, Hulk. which especially in 97 is, is, is very notable. Um, oh yeah. Well, yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, <laughs> they may have turned into a werewolf, so I don't know. He may he, he probably should have passed <laughs> well, on it. I, <laughs> but... <laughs> it. Yeah. It's it like, I, I don't want to be like, Oh, it's racist because I don't know if it is racist, but it just kind of, <laughs> it doesn't feel quite right. Uh, it I should say. feels racist, but we're not sure if it is. <laughs> right, we're not we're not at liberty to be like, oh yeah, that's directly racist. We're just kind of we're just gonna say it made me mildly uncomfortable. But <laughs> I, he's in the movie for one scene, and then he buggers off, so it's fine. Right, he tells um, Liu Kang that he needs to find his 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 he, animal his spirit animal or whatever, and then we get like uh, a glimpse at the greatest scene in all of cinema history that is to come and then we move on like that scene happens and then it's done i mean it, it it's great how this movie um doesn't rely on the things that happened previously in the movie for the story to continue quote unquote story <laughs> everything just kind of happens and then unhappens and then here we are Right, yeah. So he he tells Luke, like he tells Luke, can you need to find your animalistic side? Uh, and he's like, you need to pass these three trials. Uh, you never find out what all three trials are, and it no. doesn't really matter. As it turns it's, out. it's courage is the first one, and then I don't remember the other two because I'm pretty sure courage um, is the only one we actually see. <laughs> well, he gets he gets surprised by this woman Jade, <laughs> uh, and she like tries to tempt him. Uh, and he goes, no, I, I like Katana. So she fights him. Um, <laughs> My heart belongs to another, is I think what he says. Right, when this right, naked woman is him. caressing him. And it's like, I think there are more effective ways to test his courage. But, the, you know, pop off. <laughs> if this is what you want to do, go for it. Right, and then, and then uh, I can't remember what the second, the, the third test, we definitely never find out what it is. Um but then he just kind of wanders off of her and he's like, hey, will you help me find Katana? And she's like, yeah, I've got nothing better to do. Uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, no, you say that, and that's that's the joke. Ha ha, Josh makes a funny. But that's how it actually that's how it actually goes down. He's like, hey, can you help us? And she's like, yeah, why not? Like it, she, she you never feel any <laughs> sense of urgency from the woman, um, or like the, um, she wants to be there, which is the majority of the the, the people the characters. <laughs> in this movie Jack, i mean jacks is like at one point sonya starts berating jacks for not supporting her and he's like i'm in the middle of a desert for no reason you told me about all this stuff that i don't even know what it is i'm following you aren't i like, and i'm yeah, yeah. i'm like and I'm i like, agree yeah. with jacks yeah jacks is why <laughs> jacks is doing everything for his best buddy and she's just insulting him um <laughs> And it's uh, also apparently that's apparently like the, the next scene too. Self-esteem, courage, <laughs> and focus. I don't know how anything that he does translates to any of those. I mean, I, I um, the courage one I get at the beginning, maybe. I don't know where self-esteem came from, and I don't know where focus <laughs> came from. I mean, Jack gets say. his self-esteem. Self Right, maybe it's like a like a Wizard of Oz thing where they all need to get one. Yeah, and then it's they'll the be whole told group that they've had it all along. It. Yeah, yeah. Jax, you've had the, the courage was the friendship we made along the way. <laughs> Luke, Luke Kang's always been able to turn into a horrible dragon warrior. 
Um, uh, don't spoil it, Josh. Don't spoil. Oh, the we haven't even, we haven't spoiled anything yet. No, because uh, we're coming so, up so, on yeah. Raiden coming back right. to the scene, which right. is so they they all kind of go through scenes. Sonya and Jax fight uh, <laughs> Melina, who is Katana's evil clone. Um, <laughs> And then, <laughs> Josh, you just described the plot of this movie as our characters go through scenes. <laughs> they, well, they, there's no like <laughs> all, all that all that happens is Raiden tells them to go somewhere, and they go, and just things kind of happen along the way. Um, they fight, they kill Melina, who's Katana's evil twin, which that's never even explored. Uh, uh, and they find everyone meets Raiden at the the temple of the elder gods after he consults uh, uh, a piece of water and fire, <laughs> and they go. And some of the worst eh, yeah, special maybe... effects I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> it, and they don't even do anything. And he's like, "So why did you let Shao Kahn take over this world?" And they're just like, "Eh, things kind of happen, buddy. <laughs> Get back out there." Um, we'll see you next time. It, <laughs> like it's yeah. Like hey. You got this. <laughs> we we, um, we have faith in you. Like uh, like, uh, why not? <laughs> yeah, and like, I, I think they tell him that Sindel was the key to shutting down the portals. And once they shut down the portals, everything's fine. But we already um, know that. We already know that. Know that. <laughs> uh, Raiden said that in the in the opening of the movie. <laughs> right. Well, we've then, known that the whole keep... time. Well, he needed he needed self confidence. He, he needed his self esteem back, so he needs to be told that he's right. Um, <laughs> everyone just needs self esteem in this movie. That's the that's the underlying theme. This is actually a David Lynch film, and the underlying theme that you have to figure <laughs> out on your own is that everybody is looking for self esteem. Who's uh, who's who's Carl McClough playing in the <laughs> reboot made by uh, uh, David Lynch? He's, I... he's got to be rated, right? Uh. <sighs> Today, yes, when he was young, Johnny Cage. Oh, without a doubt. The Chad? <laughs> <laughs> um, they, all, they all meet Raiden. But yeah, they, they all meet Raiden, who now looks like a Euro trash fox star. He's got like short hair and, he's and a sleeve of vest. It's incredible. <laughs> and he's just like, they're like, is that you, buddy? And he just, he just goes, I feel good. I, you know, I'm youthful. I'm energized again. <laughs> and then he fails to open up a portal when Shao Kahn appears and they destroy everything. Um, uh, he, he, like, takes 15 minutes to open a portal. They all go through it. They all see that the world's... Everything's collapsing and it's all an apocalypse. Uh, I can't remember how, but then they end up going to the temple that Shao Kahn is at. No, they end up going to the home of Liu Kang, which is where the final battle occurs, quote-unquote. Uh, I'm trying to think. There's also a part where they try and resurrect Sindel uh, because they, they they think that if they can resurrect Sindel, she'll be, like, back on their side, which is... A, that's something from the games. Uh, uh, Sindel and Katana were kind of forcefully taken by Shao Kahn, uh, Sindel kills herself because she's so miserable about it all and she can't bear to live that life. Uh, then he basically resurrects her as an evil slave. So she's kind of a bad guy. Uh, so they try and resurrect her. She fakes it and she's like, ah, ha, ha, I'm always <laughs> being Shao Kahn's and I never liked you. You're always a crap kid. Um, uh uh, so they all they all go back to Liu Kang's home for for a cup of tea and the final <laughs> battle. Uh, <laughs> we find out that Raiden is Shao Kahn's brother. Yes, which, which I didn't that see coming. Out, that comes out of nowhere. <laughs> is that not from the games? No, no. That's okay. no, the, the only time that that's ever mentioned is Mortal Kombat versus DC, um, where in his bio it said that Raiden and Shao Kahn are brothers but that game's not even canon so that like that's never been a thing gotcha uh, well see neither. I assumed it was because it was so out of nowhere and it was so weird and unexpected <laughs> I didn't like hate it, it but like it, it felt like something that was in a game that they felt like they should put in the movie right which is the majority of this movie which uh, that's worth noting the majority of this movie feels like that um but that's because it is this thing just just comes out of nowhere and I, I mean i was cool with it it's fine uh but it did kind of take me back a little bit 
Um, cause usually when those things happen, it kind of takes you out of a movie. Not that I was all that into this movie to begin with. <laughs> like it didn't, this, the, the world building was not so spectacular. It roped me right in. Um, but when something oh, like that it, happens, it does kind of, does kind of suck you out a little bit. Yeah. I, well, it, it, it kind of took me by surprise cause it's like, so you see a couple of times that. Uh, the bad guys that they kill have these weird tattoos that turn into dragonflies that fly away. <laughs> um, and they, they, they all look they, so bad. It, it looks awful. It looks so terrible. Everything in this movie looks so ugly. And the budget of and this it, movie was so much higher than the first one. Really? I, okay. That part I had absolutely no clue. I thought it was lower. Let me okay. I, so, uh, Mortal I, Kombat 1995 had a budget of, um, <laughs> it had a budget of 18 million dollars, or or 20 million dollars USD. Uh, this movie had a budget of 30 million dollars, so it had 10 million dollars more than the first movie had. Wow, I I never would have guessed that. Genuinely, no. I. No, I will say Raiden's like lightning effects look better. Um, <laughs> yes, that very easy plug and play lightning effect looked significantly better than the one they tried to make themselves three years earlier. The, and then the one with Clip Art. Uh, but yeah, they they find that out because Raiden also has that tattoo, and they're like, "That's how the that's the other people had that." And he goes, "Oh, this is this is like a birthmark of my lineage." And I'm going, "No, it's a tattoo. It's a tattoo, Raiden. <laughs> it turns into a dragonfly, um, Raiden. Like I don't know. <laughs> That's not how birthmarks work, man. <laughs> birthmarks are just big freckles, Raiden." It, it reminds me of the new Mortal Kombat because in the trailer, they, there's a thing where it's like, "It's the birthmark I've had since birth," <laughs> which is just a, an amazing line. Um, but. Then Raiden's like, yeah, this is this is a mark of my lineage. I mean, only people from my bloodline can use it. Uh, which is where he reveals that he's Shao Kahn's brother and Shinnok is their dad. And that he fought his brother and beat him, but he didn't kill him, so his father disowned him. Uh, and his father was going to give his power to whoever killed their brother. I mean, I, it's one way to, to get a favorite child, but, <laughs> like... So... I, it, I really liked Shao Kahn in this movie up until Shinnok came in and it's like, oh, you're just, you just have daddy issues. Like on his own, he was actually a somewhat threatening villain. And then it's like the Kylo Ren thing where like, and I like it when they do this with Kylo Ren, just so don't, don't get me wrong, but you know, the Kylo Ren thing where he's like super menacing and threatening and then he takes off his helmet and he's just a big baby. Anytime <laughs> that, that he's Adam Driver. <laughs> yeah, it, right. I know what I have to do, but I don't know if I have the strength to do it. Anytime Shinnok entered the scene, I was just like, oh, now Shao Kahn is lame. Um, and I I don't think that was intentional because you don't want the main villain of your movie to seem like a, a whiny little kid. But that's the that's the sense I got throughout most he of just, this movie. He looks, like, he looks like a big baby. Like, he just... He doesn't... He, he's never seemed threatening. Um... And that, even with the mask on, he doesn't really seem threatening because the mask is six times too big for him. There are several uh, uh, several scenes in this movie um, because the mask covers the top part of his mouth. So you can't see his mouth when the mask is is on until he opens his mouth and then you can see it. There are several scenes where they just dub him uh, with what I'm pr with who I'm pretty sure is a different voice actor um, <laughs> while the mask is on. <laughs> And and his mouth doesn't move, and it's genuinely beautiful. Also should be noted, this movie, unlike the first one, is not entirely ADR, which is such a breath of fresh air, um, because it greatly improves the enjoyability of the dialogue of this movie. It, yeah, yeah. I mean, it just... This movie is so... It's such a ride. Um, <laughs> and we're we're avoiding that, that, talking about the scene... That we want to talk about because it's the best scene in the movie. <laughs> right. So they, they, they get into a fight. Everyone fights someone else. Jax fights a giant centaur. Um, uh, Sonya fights Ermac, which is like, okay, 
this is my own personal bias. I was kind of sad that they didn't uh, elaborate on Ermac because he's kind of a neat character in, in the games. He uh, he's the souls of a million fallen like outworld soldiers who basically became one person. Um, I, I, I think a lot like Legion from the first Ghost Rider. <laughs> that's, that was my first point of reference. He may be an actual character from the Bible. I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, he's such an interesting character and he just gets, he fights Sonya Blade. That's his legacy. <laughs> uh, uh, and everyone else fights someone else. I can't remember who. Uh, oh, we didn't even talk about Baraka in this movie. The, oh, the, we the guy no, we forgot. Um, who, I, I, I like him in this movie. The practical look actually kind of suits him. Um, he gets killed off like instantly, <laughs> but he's, it was nice to see him show up. Uh, but yeah, so everyone starts fighting. And would you like to describe the best scene in the movie? So we're sitting here and we're watching this film and, and, and on, on screen at the one hour and 15 minute mark during our, our huge final battle, Liu Kang, our, our hero is facing off against Shao Kahn, our villain. You know, it's 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 the classic climax of a movie. Who's going to win? All hope seems lost. And all of a sudden, we hear Liu Kang shout, I feel it! <laughs> and it cuts to a close-up of his eyes, which is reused footage from earlier in the film. And he gets these <laughs> yellow lizard eyes. And Liu Kang turns into a giant lizard. <laughs> I think he's supposed to be the Mortal Kombat logo. I think that's what they're it's going be, for. Well, it's meant to be a dragon because that in in Mortal Kombat Two, his fatality was um, he basically turns himself into a giant dragon and he bites his opponent in half. Um, but uh, maybe maybe this is where most of this movie's budget went. I can only assume. Did uh, <laughs> it? Well, <laughs> we, we, what? Hold on. What led you to that conclusion? Well, okay. Last when we were talking about Mortal Kombat, <laughs> we we were saying that like this movie had so much money and didn't do anything with it, and we could only assume that that had to go towards like the actors, like uh, like the uh, the guy who played Raiden, whose name I'm now blanking on. Uh, but this movie had more budget and looked worse and i can only assume that that's because they had to animate a giant lizard and a giant hydra like fight each other which i always i prefer the hydra's uh shao khan's transformation into the hydra because he like he stands there and he screams and then his mouth becomes his neck because <laughs> i tell he, you he didn't know what to do <laughs> when i tell you my jaw dropped my jaw <laughs> dropped to the floor i froze in an instant <laughs> when this happened it was it, it, the most was beautiful thing i've ever seen in my life genuinely genuinely speechless because there was there is no way to describe just what this looks like it came so out of nowhere it looked so bad it hurt a little bit and it, it, it doesn't even like like it doesn't even pay off defeat him as a dragon he uh he he bites him and then they go back to human form because yeah. Yeah, the the dragons were too expensive to animate I, I i mean i can only assume that's what happened and they looked so bad and then and the new cool. gods show up again or or the elder gods i'm sorry they show up again and they <laughs> Because Shao Kahn is bleeding. And they say, and I, I don't, they, 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 they say, say like, they say like, the only way for us they, to do this is the fair way in Mortal Kombat. And, and I, then that's when, that's when the music really kicks in because they say yes. that. Well, but like, here's the like, thing. We just did Mortal Kombat last week. <laughs> We know who won. Like, Liu Kang won. Why are we doing no, Mortal no, Kombat no. again? Not, not only that, not only that, but then it like it zooms in to to Liu Kang's face, and he has a smirk, and then the guy just yells, "Mortal Kombat!" 
the music, music kicks, kicks in, in, it starts swelling, which is all fine and dandy. Like, that's that's fun. Why are we doing Mortal Kombat again? What? Yeah, I don't know why. Because And also, also Shang Tsung's bleeding. He's like, I'm bleeding like a mortal. And his father goes, yeah, that was going to happen. I told you so. <laughs> and he, he's still surprised by it. And then Liu Kang just beats him normally. Again, <laughs> Liu but Kang. It Liu Kang has stressed enough. Two Mortal Kombat. Liu Kang already won Mortal Kombat. Why does he have to do it again? The 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 new or the elder gods should just say, yeah, Liu Kang already won Mortal Kombat. You guys are done. Like, get out of here, skedaddle. Wow. But you guys, you guys broke the rules. Yeah, you're cheaters. So apparently, if you ever want a new Mortal Kombat, all you have to do is break the rules, and now you get a rematch. I don't, I can't wrap my head. <laughs> around don't, don't even forget about the part where where <laughs> i can't believe this where th it happens once a generation which is still beyond vague so how long have they like secured th their, their their victory for like is he gonna have to come back in another 10 years and be like hey I guess I'll fight for another mortal combat no, it doesn't make sense, and it's it's baffling to me that that's the point we got to. Um, that, that's the climax of the movie. That's how it ends. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, Liu Kang wins um, the Mortal Kombat, da, 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 da. and Jax gets his confidence back because he rips his his metal sleeves Wait, off. The the sentinel that he's fighting rips off his sleeves, and he beats him with his hands. Uh, Sonya say... Blade kills a guy by snapping his neck and then the other two do something yeah I, I will say i liked the centaur guy I, I he was he was hamming it up the whole time i i really i wish we had seen more of him he was he was unbelievably entertaining yeah that, that, was, um, that was motaro who was in Mortal combat 2 i think um and he's he's very straightforward he's just like oh yeah i serve shelcon i have a race of centaur people <laughs> We're we're half centaur, half the devil. You get you get the idea. <laughs> we have a weird tail that's super long and looks like a lizard for no reason. <laughs> and then Jack says, "I'm gonna make you eat that tail," and he never does. <laughs> he never makes him eat it. Oh, can you imagine what kind of fatality that would have been? Oh, that would have been beautiful. <laughs> I, I I wish they like grabbed the tail and like shoved it in his like throat or something. It would have been great. And that's how he died. That would have been amazing. Yeah. Um, I can't even remember what Katana... Oh, Katana's fighting Sindel this fight. Uh, uh, and Raiden's dead. <laughs> yeah, no, Raiden is dead for the final battle. It's it's the... Um, um, oh, they do this with a... It's the... the shoot. Uh, Professor X I, thing where they have to... They have to nix Professor X at the beginning of every X-Men movie or he could just solve every problem. Um, like... Like, at the beginning of every X-Men movie, Professor X is out of the scene because he would just solve the issue in a heartbeat because he's so powerful. So they did the same thing to Raiden. They killed him off until the fight was over. And, you know, whatever. It's fine. Uh, it, it's it's fine. Yeah, then they win and everything goes back to, like, normal. Ish. And that's <laughs> except for the thing that I thought was going to happen because they kept talking about it. Sonya Blade kept talking about <laughs> how Johnny Cage was dead for every scene of the movie and I thought things are going back to normal people are getting raised from the dead Johnny Cage is going to come out him and Sonya Blade are going to have this nice moment nope he's dead he's done just forever that's it he's done he's done for because he's gone. they didn't There's want no... <laughs> an actor to bring back <laughs> I mean you could have used like reused footage for the beginning of the movie just have that scene where he pulls his sunglasses off in shock and then Sonya Blade cries there it's done I, I will say I also, I also preferred the Sonya Blade in this movie. Like she, she felt I don't know she felt like she was doing more with a character that had less. That that's a great summary of this movie, Josh. Doing more with less, except for they this didn't movie have had less, significantly had more. <laughs> more. But still, Do, doing less with more. <clears throat> there you go. That's it. And then uh, I, uh, the, the, they raise Ra the, the, the Elder Gods raise Raiden from the dead and say, hey, homie, uh, we want you to take your father's position as as Elder God. And Raiden never says yes or no. Um, he just Raiden kinda, just goes, this is your family. He now. just kind of walks over to the team. He goes, you guys take care of each other. You're a family now. 
because the real family was the friends we made along the way. <laughs> and now here we are at the end of this movie, the credits roll, you get the dun 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 and that's it. That's Mortal Kombat Annihilation. It's done. It's over. It's dead, wrapped in plastic. <laughs> oh, thank God for that. And then, yeah, the, the franchise died, and there were many, many fan films and uh, animated things and games that came out over the last 20 years, and now they're booing it with Mortal Kombat, the new one. And a lot of the, um, a lot of the, 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 the stuff... Um, a lot of the actors from these movies would go on to appear in the fan stuff um, just because they didn't get any work after this movie, and rightfully so. <laughs> and, it, because, right. and that was the uh, that was the end of it. Yeah, until they made Mortal Kombat 2021, which by all accounts is fine. Uh, I, I don't know. Seen I haven't it seen it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm planning to watch it this weekend, so, you know, maybe we know what we're doing next week. But uh, the everyone I've known who's seen it has been like, yeah, it's 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 fun. Uh, our, our buddy Aitzum described it to us as Mortal Kombat 1995 for better fight scenes, which was basically what this was. So um, I, I'm cautiously optimistic about it. I will say, as so this movie, just kind of like final thoughts. As bad as this movie is, they tried. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> they tried. I think that's you can leave it there, really. Well, this movie has a story. I know you're trying to reach it. <laughs> it, it, does has, it. Does it? Yeah, more so than the last one. It has, Man, but that's not hard. It has characters and they do things. Um, barely. <laughs> it has, it has okay ish fight scenes. This movie is a great movie to laugh at. This movie is a movie that will give you... This movie is what... Everything that you've ever heard about Mortal Kombat 1995 is more about this movie than that one. I Yeah, I think so. I don't know why this movie has a 2% on Rotten Tomatoes and 95 has a 45. Like, it's... It doesn't... 45 is far too high. Well, so the last one is boring. Uh, Mortal Kombat 1995 is a boring film. It, it it there's some stuff there but not enough. Like there's not there's nothing in that movie that makes me think like, wow, this is great. A and people love that movie. And there's nothing in this movie that makes me think, wow, this is a good movie, but this movie is is enjoyable and and it there's a whole lot more um, to latch on to and and to to enjoy in this one than there is 95. And and that's just my perspective. I know people have fond memories of that movie, and I know a lot of people like that movie, but it's bad. You're wrong. But this one, there is stuff that is enjoyable. There's stuff in there to, to like. And I don't know. I, I would recommend this one over the first one any day of the week if you want a funny movie, a funny bad movie to laugh at. This one is is the movie. This this is the movie. This is the only movie that ever will exist. It's all that's left. The this movie is should be in the Criterion Collection, um, <laughs> and it's the only movie there. It's the only movie in the closet. You walk into the Criterion Closet, the big C is there, and the only movie you see well, is Mortal Kombat Annihilation. <laughs> well, so. I mean, Godzilla vs. Kong, uh, 1963, is in the Criterion Collection. And the end of this movie is basically just that. So, why not? You're not wrong. I, 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 like, there's... This movie is frustrating. But it also means... It, the, the way that it's done means you don't care about it to the point of... The frustration just makes me laugh. I wonder like how much of that has to do with this movie not being praised. Because we went in with significantly lower expectations for this movie than we did 95. I, I wonder how much of that has an effect on it. Right, yeah. Because, like, like I said, immediately, everyone has been talking bad about this movie for so long. Um, 
I, I mean, I, this movie is twenty eight years old now. I mean, it, it, it's not like it's it's recent. It, it's it's got quite the legacy it's left. Um, right. Yeah. Well, the, and everyone, every time you've heard about this movie, you've probably heard about how awful it is and how terrible it, it's it, the CGI and effects are, or how terrible the movie itself is. Um, and that's true. Yeah, no, 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 no. Not... We 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 we've said some positive things about this movie. All of that right, Josh don't... said is true. This movie sucks. Yeah, like... don't 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 mistake the praise that we give it for for praise of the movie itself. It's more like it's more like finding out that you've stepped in a dog turd, and now you've just stepped into mud. Like it's not good. It's just comparatively better. <laughs> it's like finding out that. So your mom invited a killer clown to your birthday party, but turns out the clown's just, just a normal me. clown, um, which still kind of sucks because it's a clown, but at least clowns are funny. <laughs> you know, like it's like you're going to a comedy show and it's just a normal comedy show. Uh, but then you find out the comedian's a woman. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that, okay, there is a very awkward part of this movie um, towards the end because they start showing like how things are getting better. They show like famous cities, and <laughs> they, at the one point towers. they show the twin towers, and it was an awful, awful comparison to make. Um, well, which, I mean, it, some, this was... seven, they had no clue. So no, no, yeah, uh, it, it, we should keep a counter just of all the times we see nine eleven and watching these old movies. <laughs> it's absolutely awful um, but yeah this this movie this movie's good enough where you can watch it and you'll have a fun time i didn't this movie is bad it, it, enough it, where you can watch it and have a fun time the first one right. wasn't get yourself I some buddies like to watch it again <laughs> no i would never ever choose to watch this movie again but i also would never choose to watch the first one again and if i had to pick one of the two i would pick this one well if both of these movies were on tv and they were the only things left on TV, because everything else has been destroyed in a horrible nuclear apocalypse. Um, I would leave this on compared to Mortal Kombat 1995. Yeah, if 95 is the only one on, I'm probably going to go like grill some burgers or something in the nuclear apocalypse. Like, I'm not going to watch it. Uh, but I would watch this one because it's it's fun. It, it, it It's bad, but it's fun. And for that reason, it gets my vote. And I, I think we're kind of in agreement there. Now, we both hated the first one. Um, and don't get me wrong. Well, you know, I can't really say that I hate this movie. I more just think it's bad. I, yeah, I don't hate this movie. It's just not good. <laughs> right. That's kind of, um, that's kind of it, it, It's got, it's got a weird heart to it. It does. More so than the first one did. Um, and you know, uh, Roland Emmerich. Nope. Who directed the last one? What's his face? Uh, uh, Paul, Paul W.S. Anderson. Yeah, Paul W.S. Anderson, eat your heart out, because... He's a hack. We we far prefer the movie by famed director John R. Lonetti. This uh, guy this guy made Annabelle <laughs> and The Butterfly Effect 2, and it's better than anything that Paul W.S. Anderson has made. <laughs> it's true. It is true. All right, that's right, that'll do it for this episode of Simi Pro. Uh, we will see you next week. Uh, me and Josh haven't decided what we're going to do. Uh, it may be Mortal Kombat 2021, maybe. Who knows? Maybe we'll round out this series by ending on something that might resemble a high note. <laughs> this this one might be okay. And that would be such an improvement <laughs> over the last two. I, I, I pray. I just give me a movie that has cool action, cool SFX, and a cool theme. That's all I ask. I don't need a big story characters. I just need... Mortal Kombat! I just need something that will distract my eyes for three minutes and yell Mortal Kombat at me very loudly. Yeah. All right. That'll do it. We'll see you on the next episode. We'll see you on the next episode of Simi Pro. If you're watching on YouTube, consider leaving a like, maybe subscribing to the channel. If you're listening on Spotify or iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts, leave a review. Let us know what you think. Uh, if you want to contact us, you can message me or Josh on Instagram at Barrett Digital at Brit Edit, and uh, we will see you on the next episode of Simi Pro.